How about, um, so here's a, uh, Wichita Island? Okay, well, the, here's a, oh man, I can't even tell that story. We, we did get, to, we did get to play once with Glenn Campbell at the, uh, it was a benefit at the Jerry Ford Golf Tournament in Vail, Colorado. And we were the cocktail hour entertainment. Some, and uh, various people were, were uh, enjoying themselves. And at one point we recognized that Glenn Campbell was out there and we asked him to come up and uh, sit in with us, which he did, which was amazing and a thrill for us. And he borrowed Charles's guitar and he asked for a flat pick and there's more to that story that I can't talk about. Um, he used some colorful language. He used some colorful language, yeah. And, um, But uh, I will say this, the beginning, the early days of High Rise, which I'm not really uh, you know, involved with, which had to do with the fact that Pete made a solo record and Tim made a solo record, in 19, and they came out in 1978. And the idea was to put a band together for the summer to promote those two records. And uh, it, was, it was a long time ago, and Pete was our agent at the time, and Pete did a great job of just knowing that, given the fact that we were all you know, young and, and uh, broke, if he didn't keep us working, the band wouldn't stay together. So he had that added pressure, not only just being a guy in a band who was starting out, but he was our agent who kept trying to get us gigs, calling bars, calling all these clubs, calling all these places. And the fruits of his labor, as evidenced by my experience, which was uh, Pete and Charles and Tim and I had our first gig together at the Ramada Snow King in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, playing during a weight loss conference. <laughs> called Take Off Pounds Sensibly, or Tops. So we were there for a Tops convention, and we were the entertainment in the bar every night that week, and so that's who was in the bar. And, uh, and we, got, um, we got some requests. We got, we got one request that said, can't you play anything other than twangy wangy music? <laughs> Which, of course, we, we could, but, and we chose not to, but we could have. But anyway, we played that thing, and to credit to Pete's booking skills, two weeks later we played on Prairie Home Companion, and a month, and a month after that, we played on, at the Telluride Bluegrass Festival. And that whole summer was filled with great, great gigs and clubs and shows and things that kept the band together. But one of the things that brought Tim and Pete together was, on, on, here comes Pete to tell you this part. I just love the song Wichita Lineman. I just think it's one of the best. And if, if you haven't tuned into that lately, just check out any YouTube of Glenn Campbell singing. It's just a masterpiece of a song and a beautiful thing. And so I uh, did the only natural thing for a banjo player to do is try to work it out on the banjo. And I had uh, recently discovered the idea of playing a banjo through a phase shifter, which gave it a sort of a spacey sound. And I still have the exact same unit that I bought in 1974 to make that sound, which we'll, you will hear momentarily. And uh, I could play it in one of two keys, but the one I really wanted to play it in would require a singer that could really hit high G real good. And uh, that's what made me think, well, Tim O'Brien could do that. And Tim wasn't, uh, hadn't been a lead singer in a band uh, at that point ever, but boy, Charles and I would talk about what a good singer he was. So I uh, recruited him to do this uh, song on the record that we put together. And um, turned out he could do a lot of other stuff too, which worked out terrific. So we're going to do this song, The Wichita Lineman. Just hold on a second.
for all time And the Wichita lineman Is still on the line Wichita lineman 